Hello everyone, what I wanted to show you today is how you can modify your 3D model by Creators 3D Viewer uh, after you upload it to your job offer. First thing you want to make sure you do is click on that adjustment button. This, that will make this uh, window pop out. And before we start anything else, you want to make sure that you click on this uh, button at this uh, right top corner that says Show Images. This will make this uh, reference window pop out. And this will help you with uh, more accurate effects that you will add by using the scene, the HDR, the lights, and the shadows. So let's start. The first thing you can see in the, uh, at the right side is that if you have a few channels that we will be actually working on. So there is a scene, the lightning, the shadows, the animations, the materials, and optimization. Let's start from the beginning. So first thing we have the scene. Uh, the scene is actually used mostly for the HDR map for making sure that your model is scaled properly and for centering your model. So let's start with the HDR map. At this Dropbox list, what you can see is that you have all sorts of different uh, HDR maps provided and you can choose either each, each one uh, depending on uh, what you need from the reference. So in my case, I see that I have a lot of yellow, uh, yellow reflections. So what I can do is basically just choose this yellow uh, HDR map. Just click on it and it, in a few seconds it will be loaded. And now as you can see, we see the first uh, effects taken by the HDR map. Now, as you can see, there is too many reflections going on, rough uh, reflections. So we have to fix that. And you don't have to really worry about it and go to, to your, any software that you're using for uh, the texturing process and try to bump up the roughness or lower down the reflectivity. Uh, what you can do instead is just go for this 3D viewer option in HDR section, so there is HDR blurriness. What will this do is basically blur out the HDR map and give you softer results uh, of the lights. So as you can see now, I have softer lights, I have softer shadows, and it's more uh, natural. It's looking more like it should from the reference. Uh, so also there is uh, the HDR intensity. So in case you're um, your whole scene is too bright, what you can play with is the HDR intensity here. So by just taking this point, you can lower down the value if you need to. In my case, I don't really need to do that, so I won't. But if your um, scene is too bright, you can play with this value of HDR intensity and you'll get darker results. Now, the next thing that is uh, also important here in scene is the wireframe. You can check your wireframe from here. And also you can turn on the grid. Uh, the grid is really important, especially for checking if the scale is correct, uh, because you have to know that uh, there is, that each square of this grid in this 3D viewer is actually one meter, so you want to make sure that uh, scale is proper. Uh, and also it's good for making sure that everything is centered correctly. So in my case, everything is uh, scaled, correct, uh, scaled and centered correctly, but uh, let's say that my model is something like, uh, something like this. So let's say your model is something like this, uh, what you can do is go for this pivot section and play with these values for X position, Y position, and Z position. So you want to make sure first the X position is on center. You want to make sure the Y position uh, is on the four. Uh, the reason for this is because we need the moles to be on the top of the surface. And the Z axis position has to be also on the center. And there you go. Now you have the centered model and only thing left here to do is actually go for this save, pos save position. What will this do is uh, save the coordinates that you created for this grid and also it will reload your model and then you can start with the other sections like the lights, shadows and so on. Uh, after you're uh, satisfied with how everything looks, the HDR map, the centering, the scale, you can uh, turn off the grid. You want to make sure you turn off the grid because in any other case if you save the scene the grid will be uh, visible in the viewer after you save it, uh, which is not correct, so just turn it off. And what we can do now is go for the lights. Now, in the light section, we actually have a lot of things that we can do. So first of all, like you can see, there is a hemisphere light, directional point, ambient light, spotlight, and exposures. So there's all sorts of different values that we can play with. Uh, I'll start with the exposure, uh, which is interesting because uh, in case the uh, HDR intensity value change didn't help you much uh, with how your scene overall looks. You can also play with the exposure, which will basically give you the same results uh, or just at least bump up the results from the HDR map. Uh, as you can see now, I'm changing it to darker or to brighter. So I'll place it somewhere around here. Maybe a little more. 
And now you can play also with the lights uh, from here, from this section here. So we can add some spotlight also. You can see the effects that are going on. Uh, and each light is basically just um, changed in value by using these points here. So now I can also add more point light. So I have more light at the uh, edges here. I'll add some directional light also. So I have more uh, lights at the edges over here on the other side and also from the middle. And I can play with the hemisphere value too. Now this is not all that you can do with the lights. Uh, as you can see in uh, below each naming of the lights, there is advanced section. So you can play with the advanced uh, values of each light that you have. So uh, for instance, if I want to change the ambient light, I can play with hue, saturation and lightness also from the uh, ambient lights. Uh, this means uh, that uh, you can, in case you need some blue lights from the directional light, for instance, you can play with those values here. And also when it comes to the colors, like I said, the blue color, uh, also one thing that you can do is go for this square over here and this will make this window pop out that will actually give you uh, the color selection. So you can change the actual whole color of the any light that you want. Uh, also, let's change the acceleration just to show you the effects. So as you can see now, if I just go something like this, you can see now that I'm getting more orangish sort of look because of the saturation and if I just turn up the lightness I will get something more that I need so it's more white and that's it so now that we are fixed with the lights and we are satisfied with how everything looks we can close that section there and we can start with the shadows now in the se shadow se section there is actually two things that you can do uh, the first one is actually to make sure you place this value on 0 0.1 uh, so this is uh, the value for this 3D viewer that is the most natural for the shadows. And now the only thing left is to actually position the shadows. So you can see there is a shadow position for directional and shadow, a shadow position for the spotlight. Now before you actually work with the shadows, what's interesting here is that you can actually play with the light position also. So before you click on this checkbox here, you can actually, as you can see, change the position of the lights. And if you uh, click on this checkbox, you will actually turn on the shadows too. So it really depends on what you want and what you need from what are the requirement, uh, requirements for your model. But this is also a nice tweak that you can have. Uh, after that, what there is left to do is play with the annotations and materials. So annotation tab is actually used not for much of uh, modifications, but for value fixes on the text that is shown. So if you're sure that your uh, model is scaled properly, uh, but for some reason, uh, after you click on this checkbox at the annotation, uh, the values are not correct and not what it should be. You can change them over here. So for instance, let's say that my model should be 2 by uh, 3 by 4 and not 1 by 2 by 3. What I can do is just change the values over here. So I'll just place 2 centimeters by 3 centimeters by 4 centimeters. And now, as you can see, the values are actually changed. It's not rescaling your model, but it's actually just changing the value that is written on <clears throat> the annotation tab. After that's fixed, you can just turn off and make sure you turn off this annotation tab. So just uh, click again on this checkbox, uh, because if you don't, again, same as for the grid, if you save the scene, it will be shown after all in the viewer. After that, the only thing left here to do is materials. So in case your uh, map for some reason is not connected, any map for in this bump map or normal map is not connected correctly inside our 3D viewer, what you can do is actually go for these materials uh, and check out your material section that you have here. So in my case, I have only ma one material, so I'll just click on that one and it will be loaded. Now you can see this um, outline is basically changed. That's because we have now this black outline uh, so we can see which actually uh, which actually material we are affecting. I'll just turn off my outline and also I will make this a, a physical material. Now as you can see, well, let's just wait for this to get loaded. And now as you can see there is also uh, all, all sorts of different uh, uh, different maps that you can actually add. So, for instance, let's say your metalness map is not 
positioned, uh, not connected uh, properly to your model, what you can do is just make sure it's connected from here. So if you go for metal and map, click on it, and just go for this checkbox here, you can see your maps. Uh, and you just have to find your metalness map and just click on it and it will immediately show you the results. Uh, in case your metalness map or any other map, if there is any additional map that you want to add, is there for instance the normal map, I didn't use any for this model. If In case I need to add now the normal map for this model, I can just click on it and also add it. Now in case it's not loaded here, what I can do is just go a little bit down so let's just go a little bit down over here and you can see this add texture file. Uh, from here what we'll just do is take you basically to your, uh, to your computer and you can just search for your actual uh, normal map. So for instance, let's just go for any map here in my case. And we'll just add some map here. This will upload your normal map uh, in this case for the model. And now what you can do is just click here and check this unmapped uh, map that we've added. So if you just click on it, it will show the results after it's loaded. So let's just give it a few seconds. It shouldn't be loading too much of the differences because there is actually no normal information on it, but you can see some uh, slight changes in my material. And in case you imported the wrong uh, map or you don't need some sort of a map, so for instance, if I don't need this normal map, anymore. What I can do is just go for this uh, red trash bin and just go for trash can, sorry, and just go for deleting it. And this will delete your uh, normal map from the actual mesh and you can now use it normally as it is. And that's it guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed and for more guide videos and explanation videos, uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel and watch all our videos.